This podcast is brought to you by Steed Motor Group, Clare Galway. For your personalised vehicle shopping experience, find out more at steedmotorgroup.ie. So delighted now to be joined by uh, former St. Thomas's senior hurling coach TJ Ryan, Craig Lally and Alan Kearns to look ahead uh, to this weekend's club final between St. Thomas's and O'Loughlin Gales uh, on Sunday. A cracking game awaits. But just before we do that, Alan, obviously the news came out yesterday that your Laker Gale is going to air this year. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it just launched Yeah, yesterday. So look, it's a nice surprise to get the call to do it last year. It's something you kind of don't expect. Or, and uh, I suppose it's hard to think turn down when they say, look, it's lovely for your kids and your family to have and when you're not around, whenever that is. So I suppose it's, it's nice to be able to capture, look back on your career and your life, I suppose. The difficult parts and the, and the good parts, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, I suppose it's a nice honor to get. It's uh, official um, legend now, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez, I don't go that far. Um, but um, a lot of people would say I'm not so. Um, but look at it, it's yeah, look, it's lovely to, lovely to have for the kids in the, in the future, and I suppose look back on the African stuff and the different challenges personally and uh, on the field and off the field and the different things you've done. So it's, yeah, as as I said to you there before, uh, I, you don't get to see it, unfortunately, until maybe a week before it goes out. So you have no real input into it at all. So it's a, it's a scary thing to, you don't know how, how it's going to come out or what you said, because you can't, when you're in the interviews for three hours down there, you, you know, you forget what you said, so you don't know what you said about different things. And um, so you just, but they do a good job. So you just trust the process, you know. Oh, you have the 2011 county final, a good mention, did you? <laughs> <laughs> That's one that definitely isn't in it, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> definitely isn't in it, yeah, unfortunately. That's one of the, that's a sore one, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just on your own club, Alan, uh, Clare Bridge, mm-hmm. the player charter that got out, I suppose, from the group, yeah. what did you make of the whole thing and were you surprised with how it got out and I suppose how a lot of the media picked it up. Yeah, look at and through some talking to the locally here, because it was totally taken out of context. Totally out of context. And you know, the obviously there's not not much not much in the media to be talking about that week when that got a bit of airtime. And I think everyone has a good because that's it. Those type of I suppose rules of engagement are in place, but they're never really written down or they're understood amongst the players, but they're never really written down, you know. And I suppose the players last year didn't realise themselves. That they didn't put enough time and effort in, and I suppose they got the just rewards, you know. And if they want to could be successful like Thomas's, they agreed things had to change, you know. And that was their own, that was their own route. But I think the way they was projected as well was totally wrong. Like not loud golf, of course you love golf. Not loud golf on the day you go training. Basically, that was our our, our day of a match, like some guys are doing last year. You know, turning up to training, maybe spending four or five hours on a golf course on a Friday, and then training Friday night, and you're and you're your bollocks like so. Um, that was really what it was meant. And you don't go, you know, a few weeks before a match, you don't really go on holidays. Of course you'll go on holidays. But I think it was more transparency than permission. Maybe it was the language that was used was, was a bit wrong, but it was totally taken out of context. And it was, uh, the management got a totally unfair rap from the media in terms of in terms of um, how they were portrayed. And it was, it was tough going like so. And, the, and for everyone, the, the players and, and the management, because... You know, it was very innocently. It was, it was very innocently uh, sent down to somebody else as well, who was looking for advice on how they do stuff. So, with their club, so you know, it was totally again out of context, and I suppose there was very little to talk about in the media that week, and it just snowballed them, and people uh, people jumped on, I suppose, and, and kept at it. Yeah, it definitely did seem somewhat like it was uh, blown out of context. Yeah. Craig, just before we touch on the uh, club hurling final, obviously it's very early in the year. We're seeing the preseason competitions. We're seeing different lads get their chance. Galway win at the weekend, six twenty nine to two twenty. They're in the Welsh Cup semi final now at one o'clock on Saturday against Dublin. But Declan McLaughlin definitely puts his hand up after the weekend. Any corner forward that scores three goals, um, he's he definitely raised a lot of eyebrows across the county at the weekend. Yeah, it was a good showing by Declan. Like any day you get three goals with the Irish Cup or League or Championship, it's a good showing. Um, he showed glimpses of that last year, in all fairness. No more so when he came on because he came in got that point. He showed, he showed what he could do. I see Allen's club club man there, Gavin Lee, and other men there probably went a small bit 
quite last year compared to his, his um opening year the year before. He showed glimpses. Don Loche showed glimpses. Nice to see Jason Flynn back to full fitness again. He's obviously got a good preseason behind him. Show glimpses. Um like in all fairness to uh Henry, like especially in the backs, there's a lot of new faces there on um at the weekend and it's great to see him give chances to everyone, um, especially um, there was Tiernan, and Killeen, um, Morgan, does TJ Brennan's getting a good run at full back there. Um, just in all fairness, he's given a good shout to everyone. Dublin match will be here challenging in at the weekend, um, to see how these lads step up. So, as a small bit, as a pity we didn't see Jamie Ryan on, on at the weekend, he got injured in the warm up. Just trying to see him and see how he gets on this year, um, because he's had such a good club championship the last two to three years. So, um, everyone's kind of looking forward to seeing him with the Bowie jersey on. Um, so Hopefully he can get back to fitness for the Dublin game or maybe to get to the final. Um, but no, it was a good showing overall. I think Henry will be very happy. He's um he's extended the panel a good bit this year and looked outside the box. I think trying to find the next um the next uh starter for Galway. So overall, I'd say he'll be happy enough with how it went. Offaly game, I don't think any of us could see the Offaly game. So um, <laughs> they was happy with the Leash game anyway. So but Dublin will be a big test again. They had a good win against Antrim at the weekend. So that'll be another step up for Saturday and um. Especially with that, Bar Porrick Mannion, it was kind of a, a younger back six, so they'll be tested a lot more against Dublin on Saturday. Interestingly, uh, Craig, Henry was talking in the media after the Offaly game and he said there's been players on this panel for two or three years and he wants to see them drive it on now. It was just interesting to see him, I suppose, challenge those players who've been on the panel for that long. Yeah, and to be honest, there probably is a few of them there. Um that have probably hoofed and puffed for the last two or three years and it's probably coming to a stage now where they need to stand up and make make a state of place themselves or probably just move on. Like, And I think Henry's with the lads he's bringing in now, in particular the lads that are there for the first time this year, um, they'll take their place fairly quick if they're not if they're not standing up like you know. But um it's good to see like and it's it's good to see the younger lads, the twenty year olds starting to get a chance now as well. Um because like, he was just looking at the selection that weren't there the last day, like uh, the likes of Dai, Joey Cooney, obviously Thomas's contingent weren't there, and Jack Reedus didn't start there, Marty didn't start. So there is lads waiting just to take go back into the normal setup there. So um, as we can see for the last two or three years or any stage, now with the time to put your hand up in Walsh Cup and league games, making your statement early. So um, I'm sure that's in the back of a lot of those young lads' minds because um, you probably have to cool starting into the league again because the panel is fairly big at the minute. TJ, it's obviously the drive for five down in Limerick uh, this year. You're all hoping to get that five in a row down here. But just for the rest of the counties uh, who are obviously looking to stop Limerick, do you think these pre-season competitions are value or are they really just glorified challenge games? For me, I think they're a value. I, I, I think, just as Greg said there, for these younger players maybe guys who've done their apprenticeship in 12 months, like they need to get some sort of a start in a Galway jersey. It's difficult to throw them in maybe in the first round of the league or second round of the league. So you need to see them to see can they jump this hurdle. So the reality is, if you didn't have this competition, they'd be looking for challenge matches. So that's what the alternative would be. So for me, I think that it's a good stepping stone. Like uh, every panel needs the numbers between 15 and 35 or 36 during the year because when it hots up in championship, you need your 15 and 15. So if you don't reward these guys with some bit of game time at some stage in some competition, well, then they're probably going to ask themselves, why would I bother doing this? Like, So for me, I think they're a big value. Have you been disappointed like from being involved in a Galway club hur hurling scene for a number of years? Have you been disappointed with Galway showing because they have been talked about over the last few years as Limerick's biggest challengers? Yeah, and there's plenty of commentary that people would say that Galway are the closest. And even looking at 2024, it would be hard to argue that, let's say, they're not in the run. And I think one of the criticisms that I would have of Galway, and obviously I know Kevin pretty well and I would talk to him, like, would be that their record in Crow Park since they won the All-Ireland in 2017 is the one that you would say probably isn't good enough. OK, only one team can win the All-Ireland, but like the last couple of Leinster championships I thought were there for maybe a Galway and that maybe would have been something to build on and gave the team maybe a little bit more confidence and I don't think they're far away like maybe the one or two players that you spoke about there they could make a difference and some of those young players I've seen Gavin Lee playing club hurling and I've seen Tiernan Killeen last year I thought he was excellent and I think these guys are ready to make the next step but like I, I, I still go back to maybe 
maybe I, I don't know what Galway's feeling would be about winning the National Hurling League. I don't know what their feeling would be like. I think they need to win the Leinster Championship. And that gives, I think, everybody within the setup a little bit more confidence. I don't think that maybe, like, you should go straight into we need to win the All-Ireland in 2024. I think you need to build it. I think that's maybe the view that Henry has, looking at maybe the young fellas he's brought in and looking at maybe the picture that they're seeing. So th- that, that, that's the one thing I would say that would be disappointing is that they didn't win a Leinster Championship over the last two years because I thought both of them were there for taking. Now, you would say to me, they were very unfortunate last year with that last minute goal, but they still didn't win it. Limerick obviously still uh, clear favourites to win the All-Ireland again. Yeah, we're just really fortunate that we have a group of players uh, at the moment that are on top of their game and, like, let's say, have gone really, really well for them. And over the last number of years, they will certainly take all the beating again. But at the same time, if we go back to last year's championship, I think your mind sometimes plays games. You only kind of remember the last game. You kind of remember them as good winners in the All-Ireland final. But, you know, they got a break when Tip got beat to get into the Munster final. And, you know, a couple of the games there against Waterford, against Cork, they were very marginal when it came down to it. And, the way the championship is structured this year, like Limerick, they, they've got to go to Ennis the first day. We lost to Clare in the Gaelic Grounds last year in the round robin. So you know, if you, if if you lose that, then then you've got one for the, on our last game. You know, we play Cork like so. The, the most championship is still tight, so we're we're favourites, rightly so. But at the same time, I wouldn't be getting carried away. It'll be a hard work to be done. The good news from Limerick point of view is we do have two or three players, which I think will make a mark in the championship. I think you'll see more of Cahill O'Neill and I think likes of Adam English and possibly Shane O'Brien who are like maybe matching your young guys, 19 and 20 year olds. I think you'll see a bit more of them, which is probably something that we'd like to see maybe that the six forwards might be upset a little bit and challenged and that might drive things on. Saying that, DJ, it's a scary enough prospect. <laughs> <laughs> Just on, uh, we were talking about some of the new talent uh, there, Craig and Alan, Whichever one he wants to jump in first, but who who do you feel this year can make a difference to make that breakthrough? Like I, I just when TJ on the Limerick lads coming through there, I think we touched on this in the podcast last year, Paul. Like the biggest factor I think there, the difference in the Limerick setup at the minute with Galway setup is it's the S and C side of it. Like in, in Limerick boys that TJ's talking about there, like like Adam English, um, like th- these are big, strong men at 20, 20, 19, 20 years of age. And I think it's crucial that whatever happens with Goa this year in regards to the lads that we mentioned there, the likes of Gavin Lee or Tierney Killeen, who's actually fairly physical, but there's a lot more like him, like Declan McLaughlin. Um, these lads, they need to get physically strong. And, and as TJ said, maybe the first or second round of the league isn't the place for them in regards to that. But as the league goes on, they progress. They need to get used to big hits because... I think that where Galway have lost out in the last couple of years, it definitely in the semi-finals against Limerick anyway, is when it comes to 55, 60 minutes and Limerick really put on, go into the fourth, fifth gear and they bring on their subs. Their subs are physically matching their first 15 and they're able to finish strong. How many times have Limerick done it before? And I think Galway are just lacking that at the minute. Like you have Wheelow and you have Mac and you have Dahi and Cahill and Porrick and Joey. They're all fine. But when 55, 60 minutes comes and you need... The reserves like we had in 17, you're bringing on Jason Flynn, you're bringing on Lyle Burke, they're big physical men that can see it out for you. Finishers, they call it in the NFL. Galway are probably lacking that at the minute. And I think those 18 or 19, 20, 21 year olds, they need as much as they needed to get used to the physical side of it on the pitch. They need a big year in, in the gym as well. Like they really need to pull up and put on size. Liam Collins is a prime example. Like so much talent. He's as talented as I've seen coming through. He physically needs to get stronger. Because you've seen the semi, or the semi final last year, or this was the Leinster finally come on, and it was just wasn't physical enough, you know. And that's where Limerick are miles ahead of everyone, not just Galway, but Galway are close, probably as close as any other team to Limerick, but just physically they need to get there. And I think that's where I'm so I'm looking forward to seeing all these as young lads coming through. But there's so many that is the same same problem really. It's just S and C get strong because the hurling talent is there. Like you know, the hurling talent is always in Galway. Can that be done in a year? The S and C there you talk about. I don't think so. No. For me, Paul, I, I think that these guys they have a certain amount of it done up to eighteen years of age and then it steps up and that's why you need that two or three years. And what Greg just touched on there, it just takes time. You're not gonna build that type of muscle in a twelve month period. You're not gonna do it properly in a twelve month period anyway, right? So I just think it takes time. And you we're starting to see, right, that maybe for players, like even if you take Carl O'Neill and as good as he is, right? 
like you know, I mean, he's twenty two now, right? So like that's kind of nearly the I say in the days of maybe somebody. I, I think anyway, maybe the days of an eighteen year old or a nineteen year old having an impact on inter county championship, I'd say it might be gone. Yeah, and if you look, if you look at that, like if you look at the Great Kilkenny team as well, like TJ Reid didn't make establish himself until he was twenty three. Richie Hogan the same way, twenty two, twenty three. So was there for they did the three or four years apprentice, and then you no know, more than Carolina's doing now. Like Carolina is one of the best forwards in the country. He's not starting for Limerick. Look at the size of him. I agree totally with Greg. You know, these guys are coming on now in Limerick and they're like, Shane O'Neill's a man nearly now, isn't he, TJ? Or, and he's yeah. only 18, 19. And that's probably as a result of the, the, the academy and the, the really successful academy plan you have in place down there. I'm not, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm wrong, but I think you still need those two or three years now of, of, of doing your apprentice and getting your conditioning work and getting used to the, the pace and getting, new, getting used to the physicality and getting... Just learning, learning your trade, and um, yeah, but I, I would say, that, Alan, the, the flip side of that is, I, I would think, well, for me, from what I've seen, I would think the likes of Tieran and Colleen and Gavin Lee would possibly be two that I'd pick out that are probably ready. Like yeah, I would they say, are, yeah. they're, they're they're very close. Gavin Lee has huge potential because I know from our club as well, he's a powerful man, you know, and he has he's great pace and he's good hurling. People forget that he he came in two years ago and he's only in Leavenstone. Yes. So he's very young, like he was only nineteen. I know he he kind of um, dipped under the radar last year a bit, but you know he's phenomenal potential. I think he has it all: his physicality, his pace, and and he's good. He's a good hurling brain, and he's coachable. He listens, and he, he he's willing to learn. You know, um, and the number of them like that, he'd be one. Paul, I think would be. Would be I was Declan McLaughlin is is a great talent and can do it under pressure. No more than Greg said, when you needed a point, he pulled out of the bag and against Kenny. But he needs a bit. Of, he needs a bit of conditioning. Um, I would imagine. Liam Collins is an exceptional player. Um, you know, the likes of the Coonies are are well ready now. I know John had a great year last year, and uh, or was it Kevin? Kevin, yeah, so like Kevin, Kevin had a great yeah. year last year. Yeah, Kevin had a great year last year. So I love you'll see him now go to another level because he has that potential. He's a great hand in him. He's a great brain, like he's like his dad, and um, he he's direct. He runs at you as well. Um, it'll be great to see Jason Flynn come back and, and have a good year as well, like, you know, in terms of fulfilling that unbelievable potential he has or, or, or you know, regaining that form he had in 2017 as well because um, he can have a big impact, you know. Um, so, yeah, and look at the number of the backs. It's good, it's, it's good to see him going to be trying Keenan Fahey back in the backs and he's trying Ronald Clean, Ronan Glennon back in the backs as well and that's what they play for their clubs and, you know, we may find, uh, he, he may find a few... Uh, a couple of players that are very versatile, you know, and that can play between the seven and ten or the wing forward midfield half forward line. Because I think we need to build strength around there. That's where we lost it last year as well. And I think Limit really choked them out in the in the second half and squeeze and put massive squeeze on and pulled away. So you know, the, um, I would agree with the lads, but uh, there's a bit of work to do yet. But Alan, I'm sure as Galway people, the first thing I think you'd like to see here is this team. Getting ready because I think they're ready to do this. Go and win the Leinster Championship. Well, that's F, that that has to be number one priority. That's a great point, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I said that yesterday to somebody in 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 the launch. The, uh, like what was Henry's goal? I said the only thing he wants now is just focus on Leinster, win a Leinster because then you're in a semi final, and then yeah, you're behind them. And you've something to show it for the end of the year yeah. as well. Yeah, 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 I think that'd be that's important at twenty four. Yeah, mm. yeah, because I agree with you. Like they had, they had their they had one hand and four fingers on it last year. You know. Um, yeah. And they lost, and the year before, they just didn't perform. They should have, they could, should, probably should have gone for three in a row. Linces. That could be potentially, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It has been um, a long time since everywhere. And anyone who's come on the podcast this year has, has talked about uh, how crucial um, the Leinster title is for Galway this year. As a neighbour in parish, Craig, to, to Thomas's, do you have to flag up in the garden? What do you think now, Paul? Yeah. <laughs> I, I know he loves them. <laughs> There's plenty of them up around the town now, in all fairness, right? But um, not just yet. Um, yeah, no, look at it, in all fairness, like, it was rivalry to start, but now you just sit back and you tip your hat and just say, unbelievable. Like, it, as a club, like, it's, it's unbelievable what they're doing. And um, I know we were talking about it um, before we came on air there, like, but when we started off the rivalry back in the 221s years ago, they had that core bunch of players and the Davey and Connor and Shane wasn't too far away and Bernard was there, James Regan and Ian and Dara and Cahill and uh, there was a good few there and 
but now they've just they've even expanded even more like TJ touched on it there before we come on air like they've, they've managed to just pull one here pull one there year on year and they've really expanded on like and where many teams would have dropped away like um, they've just drove on stronger and stronger like and to be able to do what they've, they've done in, in Galway and um, on Sunday or the weekend hopefully they'll be able to um, drive on like and and you know, they deserve a second or large like, for that team in all fairness they've, they've came so far now they've what is this Davy and Connor and as would have A county medals um, to have A county medals and only one Ireland Ireland is probably not a true reflection of, of the team they are um, so look a big task ahead on Sunday um, we'll be, I'm sure we'll get into it in, in more detail now but um, yeah it's it's uh, it's definitely going to be a, it's going to be a tough one um, I think the fact that but they know that as a team anyway they're very experienced um, I think the fact that uh they beat Bally Gunner in the semi-final. That's definitely a monkey off their back there over the last couple of years, um, semi-finals and stuff like that. But um, I think TJ touched it there before we got on air as well. The Kenny teams, finals, never easy. Never, never easy. And um, they never take the attitude that they have going into finals back to Kenny teams. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, that's something our Lachlan's have done. Just managed to stay in games all year. Uh, if you look at the Kilkenny Championship, the Leinster Championship, and even against Cushendall in the semi. But TJ, do you miss not being involved with this group in the lead up to an All Ireland final? Ah, you would, and you, well, you certainly would leading up to an All Ireland final. I wouldn't miss it driving up and down the road now in August, September, or maybe in the wet September, October nights in parts of Galway when it's pissing rain and like t- things are going poor for you but uh, you'd always miss kind of match day but look I, I totally enjoyed my time up there uh, they're a phenomenal group like they like I know we probably say this about a lot of people and families and groups around the country about eat sleep and drink in Ireland but these guys actually they don't do anything else only only hurling up there like him you know they're driven they're ambitious like if you take me back I said to Greg at the start to 2017, 2018, and you said to me, is it possible that a club team in Galway could do a six in a row? I would have thought with the rivalry and maybe the competition there that it wasn't possible, but they somehow have managed to do it uh, through difficult times. And one of the major advantages they had before the Belly Gunner game was the first time I can remember in a long time is that a full squad to pick from, which was Mm. huge. Like getting Davey back and his drive and like even just him doing what he's doing and like the rest of the lads seeing that and no, I was making the point there about these young fellas like um, like Oshin Flannery, Victor Manzo, um, John Head, do you know I mean Evan Duggan, the difference they've made, do you know what I mean with the energy and enthusiasm they brought in. But then from those guys, when they come into a setup and you go into a dressing room and you have the likes of the Fintons and the Shane Cooney, Connor Cooney, David Brock and said, that makes a huge difference because we were all in dressing rooms where you go in and just genuinely would be kind of looking up to these guys and then awe some of these guys. And you've got some of the biggest characters and you know, I was talking about David Burke earlier on today uh, and looking at what he's done over a long period of time. And like, it's not for this show, but like, but you'd be having an argument that he's certainly one of the best midfielders that Galway ever had. And given what he's done in terms of with his club and his county and captain, his county and man of the match, and fine, and the scores he's got, and let's say the All Stars and everything that he's won between Leinster's, Fitzgibbons, National Leagues, like, he could be one of Galway's greatest, if not the greatest. And he's lived in an era where Joe Canning probably took most of the limelight and I wouldn't like I, I probably have arguments to say that he's definitely up there in that category but like you, you can't get in the way from Joe Kenny but that's the type of player you're talking about in a Thomas's dressing room driving this kind of maybe insatiable appetite for just success and like he he, he has led the charge extremely well as has Connor the captain of the team to win six counties just on that, uh, TJ, because you worked with the, the group, just interested to get your view. They've maximised their potential. There's n- mm. no point in saying otherwise. It's been unbelievable what they've did for a rural community when you consider like it's it's not a huge parish, as you're aware. But how have they done all of this for you? How have they done it? Yeah. Like, I, I, I go back to, I suppose, maybe the breakthrough year of 2013 where they had, like, let's say, just... Uh, got everything together and they won an Ireland club final against Kill- Karma Kilahi. I think it was 113 to 111 or something was the final mm-hmm. score like so that was the breakthrough and obviously that gave them the confidence and then they hit a flat spot and I suppose maybe then in the end of 2017 when it sounded or felt like maybe that there was maybe warnings that it might be the end of them 
they kind of galvanized themselves. They went away and like headhunted and got Kevin Lally involved. And like I said, they talked me into going back up there and just wanted to go after another county title. And they kind of maximized everybody they had and kind of got everybody, let's say, that was available to play for them and just really wanted to go after and win another county. And just has built from there, like, and, and everything they've done, let's say, um, I would say since with the younger fellas has kind of like, let's say, given them the drive. Maybe as well with these younger fellas, if I go back to 2017, like David Burke bringing Dylan McCarthy back to the clubhouse, I'm sure would have left some sort of an imprint on these 11, 12, 13 year olds, Alan, as I would imagine in any club, right? And saying, look, that basically, like, when you see it and you see it for real, that you want to be that. And, you know, I, I like I still come back to the point that these leaders that they have in the dressing room, definitely led by the likes of David and Connor, to me, they've been probably the biggest part of the influence of what they've done over the last number of years. Alan, TJ touched there on Connor Cooney, and he's just been remarkable in Galway the last mm -hmm. six years, you could say. But Connor Cooney has to be up there with one of the, the greatest club hurlers in the club championship if you look at his performances for Thomas's. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, definitely. He's he's unreal in terms of the last number of years. But just go back to the point you're talking about there. Oshin Flannery is a cousin of mine. And okay. what was their first year that they won? 2012. Yeah. I remember fine. Justin, his dad was a selector. He's my first That's cousin. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he asked the county final. We all congratulated him and I have a few points. We said, these lads, he said, they're different. He said, they're not talking about the, the, the night they won the county final, the first one they're talking about. He said, they're not talking about one, they're talking about six or seven, right? That's what he said to me. And it never it rings in my ear now. And then they went on a flat place and I was talking shite, you know what I mean? But they were down to fulfill exactly what he said. So I think they'd be a unique bunch of players and a unique bunch of leaders like Connor and David. And I would agree with you, TJ. David's one of the big, greatest players we've ever had in Galway, without a doubt. He's up there in the in that in that echelon, you know, uh, in that strat in that in that category. But Connor, yeah, and Connor is probably one of the greatest club club players, you know, in terms of uh, leading leading Thomas's and his contributions. Even the last day against Bally Gunner, you know, the freeze under pressure, he kept the minute, kept the minute, kept the minute. They weren't easy freeze like in that conditions, and they, they were they were from way out as well. And uh, you know, he, he you know he so many his performances in the club championship over the last three or four years have been just phenomenal. So he's he's dragged them through games, you know. And the one great thing about them is, you know, you think they're bet, but they'd always manage to pull out a pull pull it out in the end. And uh, their level of composure under pressure is phenomenal. Uh, they never panic and and uh, their their hurling brain is really good, isn't it, TJ? I'd imagine you, you know their level of intelligence as hurlers is and their understanding and their they they know and their brothers as well as well as just their small families. Or not small families, they're big families. Yeah, yeah, but, they, they are, but sometimes that can bring problems too. Like you like you yeah. know yourself, you know, the country, there's loads of let's say a brother takes over a team and yeah, the other brothers yeah, might enroll in. Yeah. Like even even Kenneth's management of David there, let's say in the cameo roles and semi-final and the final, when it might have been harder because the final was in the melting pot there for a good while and they still held David like but yeah, but they, they, they have super brains, like even tactically what they did against Belly Gunner with kind of like the hybrid approach where they tagged Parik Mahoney, they identified him and like they, they did it really, really well. And I said, we talked about what's under in a while, but they, they are smart, yeah, without a doubt. And the one thing I know from even from being involved in Clarence Bridge, the county final, they're well able to mix it like they're tough and they're, they're well able to play the game, you know, as well. And, um, but I would, I would obviously from Oshin's point of view as a, as a relative, but I would love to see them win it just to do the six in a row justice, you know, in terms of, yeah, match, that six in a row is an unbelievable achievement, you know. They probably might do seven. Um, but to do six in a row in this day and age is, is unbelievable. And they, I would love to see them go on and win it to, to put that second All Ireland to the eight county titles. I think, you know, they'd be, they'd be unlucky with the Belly Hale match two years ago. They had that in the bag and TJ Reid stuck a goal and, and didn't turn up last year. And I suppose they'd be unlucky out of Galway, but you would love to see them, I suppose. What's the right word? Um, put the second All Ireland with those six county titles just for that bunch of players. I think they deserve it, you know. I know you don't get what you deserve, but yeah, but I know a lot of games will be tough and Cup half will be different as well, you know. I think uh, Port Leash suited them. Um, they were, they were, uh, it was a tight pitch and it was a wet pitch and, you know, they are an older team. Um, the leaders, you know, um, they have a few younger lads, obviously, but 
you know, Crow Park would be different with little wide open fast balls. Um, um, that that would be my only concern with 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 with, with them. With the Lachlan Gales, you know, and Lachlan Gales have and Lachlan Gales have, have three have one quality backs, have four quality, five quality backs there, and Deegan, Hugh Lawler, and Mickey Butler, and that wing back is good at Jordan here, is it? You know, oh, that, oh, if they can shoot out if they can shoot down Connor and Aina Burke with those, like they're all all stars, those boys. Um, if they shoot down Connor and Aina, um, you know, which is a difficult thing to do, but um, you know, if, if I know that they wouldn't have uh, St. Thomas's forwards, obviously, um, or Lachlan Gaze, but, you know, it's an, int- it's an incident battle, isn't it? Just on that, Craig, uh, Alan talked there about Thomas's to get their just reward, and for a lot of these players to add a second order, and from 2013, you have nine players involved who have been involved in Sunday, which include uh, all the Burks, uh, Shane and Conor Cooney, and James Regan, but... For the younger generation, like Finton, Keen Mahoney, Victor Manzo, Oshin Flannery, like you get the sense these lads are desperate to get their hands on their first All Ireland medal, considering all the success they've had over the last few years. Yeah, I'm presuming the the hunger is definitely there. Like, and I'm presuming they're looking down on the, the Robert Murray's, the Richie Murray's of the world, and all them with their winner learned as well, and that's probably driving them on as well to think that they've. What was it sixteen? Was their next one? Richie wasn't there for that one, I'd say. So, um. Richie's the one. These guys have seven county medals or six or seven county medals and they're probably thinking Richie's won our Ireland, Robert's won our Ireland, Tan has won our Ireland, all these ads. So they're definitely just five one. Um, but just go back to Alan's point there, like they're very, very good at uh, winning these tight knit games like like a lot of games have been this year. I think it was this E Allen in the quarter final, kind of work at a point on the sideline. It was around sixteen. That was the start off the run in anyway. a like that. Was that was twenty eight, Ingrid. That is, yeah. was it? Yeah. yeah, that was very, very It went extra time. Yeah, it that's did, right. Yeah. yeah, they're just very good at finding them situations. Like, and I didn't realize that was 18, no, but it was loads of them type of games, loads of semi finals against Turlock that sort of way. And they just they, they have a know how of how, how to find a, a win. But I put an Alan's point there. I think that was a good point. Hope Park might suit them as much as a tight pitch, I think, the next day. Um, just then <clears throat> triangles where they're pin the ball 15, 20 yards, small pitch, wet ball, unbelievable. It's the best I've ever seen. Um, so that's one thing that might go their way the next day that well, lock and gates might be a small bit. As Adam said, the youth might be on their side a small bit. But where I think that um, Thomas is a pick up in it, I think man for man, there'll be three great battles there. Mikey Butler, Paddy Deegan and um, Lawler. Hugh Lawler. Against Aina, Connor, and Oshin. I think they're they're going to be three unbelievable battles the next day. But where Thomas is really need to be strong is they have a, they have a better six backs than a lot of guys, six forwards. Um keep Mark Borgen quite control that completely. And I think they've an absolutely brilliant chance the next day. Um like I just think that experience as well. They've been there, they've know how Lock and Gales of 2013, was it? Two eleven. We beat them in two eleven. Two eleven, was it? Yeah. Two eleven, yeah. The last time they were there, so Thomas has loads of experience within the team. Um, so like I just think that even regards the, the subs they have coming on now, Thomas is after finding two or three more. Bernard's back now, and Tory's six, seven, eight weeks done since the county final. Loads of fitness, so he's another option there. If he doesn't start, he can come on. Like if you look at Evan Duggan got dropped the last day, the way he came on and reacted. Thomas has now had 17, 18, 19 players they can use. Um, so that's a big plus. Like we played them in the group this year in the first game and they didn't bring on any, any sub they used 15 players no sub they played Portumna in the second game and they played Perluck in the third game and they only brought on one sub against Portumna in the second game and two subs against Perluck Moore and I'd say the only sub came and he came on in the second game and he was only back from New York a couple of days so all of a sudden now they're after getting a panel Davies back Bernard's back they've brought two two or three more so yeah. they have now sorry and uh, TJ said earlier on the, the full squad for the first time in a long time. For the first time in a long time. And that's, I think, out of the, the whole six in a row, the thing I admire the most about them is it's not as if they didn't have their casualties along the way. Finton was out of Crouchy, Davy was out of Crouchy, Mark Hoffman stepped away this year, Bernard was gone this year. They found a way and they've moved lads around all through these six years to make it happen. Whereas other clubs, they might win a county like us, say we might win a county in 14, we'll find an excuse for not winning 15 because this lad was gone or that lad was gone. They just went about their own way quietly. And one thing about them, like, they're so close-knit. Like, I haven't heard... I'm 
five miles out the road. I haven't heard a thing about them in the last four weeks. You know what I mean? They're just very tight in family. And you know, TJ said brothers can go with you sometimes or go against you. You're a lot of them in, in it, but I think that definitely goes with them at the minute. Like they're just a very tight knit family, and um, I think that will stand in the next step. Obviously, Mikey Butler and Hugh Lawler are going to be O'Loc and Gale's two key man markers. But lads, whichever one of you want to come in here first, what do you do with Paddy Deegan? Because what Nafina did in the Leinster final was they they went and they tried to go at him and they got success off it when Curry got the goal. But then they didn't get success when Paddy Deegan wasn't tracked and he launched five points and some of those points were remarkable from distance. If you're Thomas's this weekend, do you have a man marker for him? Um, I I don't think you can man mark a centre back, right? What what I was going to say to you was, I think that's maybe one of David Brooks' biggest fortes is, is that he's just IQ around the middle of the field. He'll know and he'll be expect he'll have watched him now closely. I, I I'm just thinking about uh just during the week, like if you, if you were to say to me that you Lawler, like who who is he going to pick up? Like, is there a possibility that he might pick up Connor, right? And then if they do, right, they might drop Connor deep, right? Now, in the last day, Connor spent a little bit of time at full forward and he spent a little bit of time outside. Aina, Oshin Flannery, Posse playing as a two man up top, right? And then we'll say with Victor in and out, right? And then obviously Thomas is dropping the next man into the middle of the field. So there's a little bit of what do, let's say, O'Loughlin's react with there? Do they leave Mikey Butler and Hugh Lawler as their two inside or do they bring Hugh Lawler to kind of maybe a centre back position? where they can allow maybe a Paddy Deegan up the field. That's going to be the first interesting piece. And I think that, let's say, Thomas will want maybe to influence their game on, let's say, O'Loughlin's, rather than maybe pinpoint a man marker for Paddy Deegan and try and get Connor into the game. But it's a very interesting question as to how that setup manifests itself. Do you nearly put Connor on the wing? Because then O'Loughlin's have to decide whether to bring someone out or they they keep him out there because we all know with this Thomas's side, all the forwards have switched. Like they're not going to stay in one position for the one game, but it kind of does make O'Loughlin's decide do we bring Butler or Lawler out because they know the influence Connor has on these games. I definitely think Butler will stay inside. I like I I suppose if we were to say like is Mikey Butler tailor made for someone like an Anna, I'd probably say he probably is, right? That that that, that looks like a matchup that you could see happening. That maybe poses a question then for Lachlan's as to what they do with Yule Aller, right? So I think maybe could you see him playing nearly as a as a centre back, which allows Paddy Deegan maybe to to step up. But then that would be playing five backs and five forwards, which is tricky for Lachlan. So as I said to you, I'm just going to be curious. That's going to be my early focus is to see what way they, they, they do that. And as I said, to be fair to Kenneth and Thomas's. They got their setup and their structure really, really right for Belly Gunner and they nullified their game. So I think they'll be trying to maybe influence their game where Connor is drifting out of that number 11 position. Like, I won't say from the wing, but he'll be drifting in, a, in all sorts of positions, which will cause any potential centre back um, a question mark. So, like, could you see possibly somebody else tagging him and maybe Yul Aller and Paddy Deegan setting up maybe as two of that half back line, whereas Mikey Butler and let's say, Connor back would pick up maybe two lads inside, so that will be interesting to see early on. I think it's a similar scenario to the, to the county final when Dahi was six for Turlock and they were going to they didn't know what to do with Dahi. Connor nearly sat back in his own half back line and he picked up an awful lot of ball from the half back line and he was pinging. And I think that if a lot of Gales do that the next day, they won't be they won't they won't be able to allow Thomas the same amount of ball as they did in the semi final because. Thomas's scoring efficiency is way higher than what it was for, for Cushing Dahl in the semi final. So, like, oh, it's a big call to make. I, I think myself that Hugh Lawler and Mikey Butler, I think that O'Loch and Gales will leave them in the full back line and maybe pick up either Aina and Uchin or Aina and Victor Manzo, whoever plays inside. Like, you know, if, if Thomas has played two inside with a man coming out to the 45, the corner forward, they'll want Mikey Butler and Hugh Lawler inside. The big question then it'll be the same way as Turlock Moore. Um, had to make a decision on Dahi and Dahi stood back in front of Ronan Burke his brother in the in the county final if Paddy Deegan does that that could be trouble because what happened with Turlock Moore was Connor had all the time in the world and he was getting on ball and he was Paddy, on ball. Paddy doesn't like doing that uh, Greg yeah. Paddy likes to be fucking mortal up the field doesn't he <laughs> oh he does he does he does and he doesn't like a bit like myself when I was in the back he doesn't like man marking either so <laughs> he likes to be the free man but Connor's, Connor is unbelievable at playing that game he'll come yeah. back 
to midfield and he, he'll start the attack, but yet he'll be up there when the ball goes up. And it's awful hard as a centre back to defend. And what that does then is it creates loads of space. And that'll create space for Ain inside and for Victor Manzo and you'll create space for um, Oshin to make all these runs. And as a centre back, it's very hard to know what to do. But Greg, would yeah. you think like that? So you're kind of saying 20, you might play a Tony Kelly role, kind of go yeah, Roman. Then they, they might put Mikey final. Butler on him because Mikey Butler nullified Kelly, you know, uh, any time to play them, he followed him everywhere. So if you want to cut out Connor, they might think about, and he's putting an influence in the game, they might. And Mikey Butler's well able to score as well. He didn't get a goal last year and uh, in, when, when it was against the goal, it was it. Um, so, you know, that could be another option for them where they they just try to nullify Connor altogether. Interesting, yeah, it's an interesting view. Alan. And, and like, I think that O'Loughlin's possibly would look at with Thomas if 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 O'Loughlin's nullify Aina and Connor yeah. from play. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they're, they're a long way there, you know. They're a long way there. <laughs> And, 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 and Hugh Lawler is so good on his own at the back. You could trust him with your life. He's such a good. He's, he's up there with Dahi, in my opinion, as one of the yeah. best backs that they're yeah. of, the, of this generation. You know, um, and their other backs are you know, Paddy, Vin, Paddy Vegan can then sit or float or do whatever you want. Like they probably need to plan for him because he he was the launch pad obviously for for Nafina's match and and again the against Cushion a little bit in the second half because he can score from deep too. You know, um, so. He, they need to have a side that though is they're too reliant to Mark Bergen for scores in the forwards. They, they are way too reliant, yeah. So they're going to have to come up with a plan there as well because yeah. they won't be able to be relying that much in the final, like, especially Paddy. You can't have your centre back in the second highest score. No. <laughs> you need a bigger return from the other five forwards. You would expect Thomas's full back line, like they're, cool. like they're definitely not dealing with the same type of form, not dealing with a Daisy and a Patrick Fitzgerald, mm-hmm. no, right? So like you'd expect to win that line and maybe win like Shane Coney's probably playing as good Orland as he's played in a while now. So you'd be quite happy with the back. So maybe it's a, if Thomas can nullify that systemized piece in the middle there where Pay Deegan, and depending on what approach they take, that would be key for them. If they, if they can put Pay Deegan on the back foot, certainly early on, I think it could definitely be a huge advantage for him. Dean Manny and Owen Wall, it's already uh, one of the key battles that you'd look forward to this weekend. It just feels like Keen kind of ties up perfectly, really, with him. Like both kind of have blister and pace. Keen is a Keen is a very good man marker. You know, he's, a, he's exceptional. He did a great job on Desi um, the last day, and he's done great jobs in Galway as well. Um, he's very physical, and he's 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 he's, he's tiger tight. So I'd expect him to probably come out on top there, as TJ said. Who goes on Mark Bergen then? Mark, Mark Bergen played against us in 2011. That's 12, 13. So Mark wouldn't be known from, you know, from play. He wouldn't have missed any pace. Or he's a great finisher if he gets the ball. So if you prevent him from getting the ball, is a big thing. And he's obviously nullified the freeze because a lot of their scores come from freeze to him. Um, or to Deegan, obviously. Um, so I'd say, you know, he won't, you know, if you put anyone with a bit of pace and, and, and just... Focus on man mark, and he won't too much in play, I think. Uh, and then just and just be disciplined on your tackling and, and the free count. You know, he'll struggle to see where they'll get their other scores from. The other way, other wing forward is quite decent, isn't he? Uh, Conor yeah. Conor Heary, yeah. yeah. He's a lot of pace and he's direct and he creates a bit as well. Um, I, I would say, Alan, that Thomas's will probably like to keep the structure of their six backs. Yeah. Like they'll want Fint in the three and Shane at six, mm-hmm. and let's say the two boys in the corner, like, like David Sherry and, and Key Manny. Like, you, you won't see any major moves there or any maybe major man marking, unless somebody's kind of causing a bit of damage. But I don't see the structure of their defense changing at all. Maybe David's positioning, like whether he sits in his own 65 or where he pushes on, and that's where I was kind of saying one of his key advantages he's the smartest to kind of read that early on as to where. Maybe he can close some space for Paddy Deegan or whatever. So I but the, the six backs for Thomas is I don't see changing anyway. I don't think it'll make a difference yeah, anyway. Who back 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 to, hmm? I don't think like as a six backs, like every every one of them is able to the job like they're yeah. they're well experienced now at this stage, like and they're 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 very good men markers the six of them. Because as TJ said, Shane is back to his best, absolutely flying with the full back line is with the way David Sherry has come back from his crew as well has been brilliant. Um and, and John Head is having a great year. If Mark Bergen is centre forward, I think Shane could do awful damage on him going like what Deegan does because Shane is well able to go forward as well. He likes to attack, and I don't think Bergen will attack him or, 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 or prevent him going forward. You know, so he could have a big influence in the game in, in that regard. 
And, yeah. and one thing I will say as well, I, I love watching David play because even the Valley Gunner match, TJ, he called them all around at the middle of the game and this, 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 and he was conducting the orchestra himself and Connor and a few of them. And, you know, the big thing, like no more than the dubs, they are able, to, they have the, um, they're empowered to make the changes themselves as a group of players. And you know, that that's just invaluable to have that kind of a player on the pitch where he's reading it and making changes and making really astute changes, you know. To be able to play and then read the game at the same time is an unbelievable skill to have or ability, you know. And he's experienced on Crow Park as well. Like yeah. So uh, that's, a, that's a big plus for him. Well, Auckland's haven't won our Ireland club. Thomas's have. There's small things like... But, the, the the bookies price is tight. The Thomas's are marginal favourites. Think possibly their win over Belly Gunner would have done that for them. Um, there's there's something about a lot of gales that's let's say you're kind of saying they're very beatable every day they go out, right? And yes, they beat Belly Hale by a point in the county final. They beat Nafina by a point in the Leinster final, and they beat Cushendall by. And in all three games, at times they looked like they were going to get beat, but shakers they still pulled it out of the fire like so. That's it's a fair trait. And like, it isn't like you can win a game by a point in a day and be lucky, but you don't win three of them with luck. Like there's something about that structure, you know? They're just, a, as you mentioned, they're just a typical Kilkenny team. They just know how to... Oh, they won't lie down. But, but with, with high quality players now, I know we yeah. might have a question mark about their forwards, like, but they might just have some of the best backs in the game at the moment as well, you know? Three of the best backs in the country without doubt. Yeah. I think th- three lads there as well that we didn't really mention there. Like, and they're just so important. Thomas James Ray has been up there with Connor as one of the best club players in the county for the last six years. He gets so he gets through so much work there. Like, and it's so dangerous. He'll always come up with his two or three points, and maybe pop up with a goal. And uh, I think David back beside him now as well. Like, it's just gives him free reign again now to bomb on forward. And Dara as well. I think Dara just because. Dara's Connor came back in the freeze about two or three years ago, and you probably wouldn't hear Dara's name mentioned as much because he wasn't on the freeze. But the amount of donkey work Dara gets through with all rough tackles and hits and the the hard knock stuff, Dara does an awful lot of that now in the QT. Like and like himself and James and, and Damien Finnerty as well, who's had a great year this year, another breakthrough. They're three lads that have been putting in savage work as well all year. Um and they'll they'll yeah. be a big factor in how, how the, the game is determined as well at the weekend. Greg Damon Finnerty did a huge job for the team against Belly Gunner. Like, could he be a potential, let's say, for a potential Paddy Deegan and say mm-hmm. maybe walk around that, whereas he just does a job for the team. So maybe, Paul, the question you asked at the start, maybe Damon Finnerty or, or it might, might be the answer. Yeah. Is Thomas's biggest challenge going into this kind of coming down? Like, obviously, they've come down now from the high of the Belly Gunner, but to just... To come down from that high, is, is that the biggest challenge going into this weekend, do you feel? I suppose they've, they've, they've played the challenges, but they have them all. Like, I suppose like any of us who've been involved in big games, like, like semi-finals after winning, like they would, they're around the block enough, you know, and, and such having won six counties, they know. like they, they, Those boys know that the job isn't done. Like, and I think any of the commentary afterwards kind of went, went with that. So, just, I, they, they'd have been well-grounded you now, and they said training in the last, let's say, Two weeks, they, they, they know that this game has to be won, and nobody will need to tell them that they need to cap the eight counties. As Greg said, there with a second other, they, they these boys are smart and they've been around the block. So the pressure that they will have within will be as great as pressure from anywhere to win a, a second other. No doubt about that. Yeah, and it's not like they're coming in two weeks ago. It's they have a Christmas in the middle to to take the, to come down a bit as well, but. Their experience at, and, and as not having them, as she just said, they're trying to put that second All Ireland, you know, the hunger that will be there amongst the whole squad to, to fulfill that will be huge. And I think they're that they're not they won't take a lot of games for granted at all. I, I feel are, are and with their experience and with what they've been through over the last six years, you know, I think they'll be they'll be they'll go out exactly like they would they against Ballet Gun and we're just nothing more than massive work rate. Mass worker because the hurling will take care of itself. It's just good hurlers. If they can bring that level of intensity and that level of work rate, you know, everything else will take care of itself because it's such good natural hurlers, you know. Can just that challenge, can they can they bring that intensity to a bigger pitch with 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 with, with faster ground? Actually, I didn't see who, who's refereeing it. I didn't see that. Who's done to referee it? I actually haven't uh, checked myself. I will check here now. But okay, um, <laughs> but just before we get Final predictions, uh, Craig. Thomas's 
obviously played that All Ireland final against Ballyhale in nineteen. They played Dunloy last year in All Ireland semi final in Crow Park. This will be their third time really. This group going to Crow Park, O'Loughlin Gales. That group kind of went once against Nafina. Does is that an advantage this weekend? Um. I don't think so, really. To be honest, like a lot of those, like the, if you mentioned the three backs, every Kenny, like they're being there enough to says to the county. Um, I don't think that's a massive advantage. To be honest, like I'm sure Thomas's memories the last two times they went to Crow Park will be won't be good in the back of their head. So, um, I don't think so. I I think that look at they're, they're an experienced side. Um, I don't think that comes into play. I think that if Thomas has got and play their game, play the way they have been all year, and just play to their strengths. They're a bit. I think they're a better team than the Lachlan Gales. I think if you just play to your strengths, play what to do, do what to do best. I think the results take care of itself. But I think, yeah, yeah, you talked to, you asked a question there about um, what their biggest challenge was. Thomas is facing into the the weekend. I think their biggest challenge is get get a performance out of themselves. If they can get a performance out of themselves. I think the results take care of itself. But it's just getting up for it. Like a lot of people have spoke about after the Valley Gunner match about oh you bet the favourites etc. But within their own camp, they're probably saying to themselves, a lot of people have spoke all year about we're doing after doing six in a row and we still don't have our earned medal for that group of players. So I think that's their own challenge within. I think um everyone everyone within the Galway community anyway is definitely expecting that they'll win. It's going out there now and just performing. And um, I think that's the biggest challenge. Just another player, sorry, we never mentioned there. And I spoke about challenges that they've had over the last six or seven years. We've gone through a good few goalies down through the years. Gerard Murray was in goals. And Gerard Kelly's come in. Gerard has come in there in the last two or three years. An exceptional year. Only for him, they wouldn't be in the final after the semi-final against Saracens. He pulled off a wonderful save off Joey Cooney at the end of it. Did well the last day in the penalties. Puck out to be on point. We played them in the group. Puck outs were unbelievable to the wing backs. It was like quarterback. The two wing backs were going up along the wing. Evan Duggan got two or three points out of them against us. He did it all year. He's just been, he's, he's really took the bull by the horns this year in goals. And I think that he he deserves a lot of praise as well for what he's done. And um, like that, he's been on in goals for the last two or three years and he's really stepped up to the plate as well this year. Yeah. Sean Stacks, the referee, this weekend. Uh, so he's he's taking charge of the game. Just final predictions now. Uh, TJ, coming to you first, I get the sense we all think Thomases are going to win, but why? Yeah, I, I, I just... Going to agree with Greg. I think just all round. I think they have a better forward unit. Um, I think both sets of backs are pretty strong, and I just think that that drive that having win, having won six counties, and for some of those lads not to have the other in club. And I think maybe just something about the year that let's say David has just gone through, and he's kind of the king or the leader of that group, and getting back, let's say, so quick. They've all seen it and on the pitch, I think it's their year. And I think it'll be great for them to cap it off. I also think it'll be good for Galway. It'll be great, Philip, for them to have champions in, in, in Crow Park again. And I just can't see them being beat just the way that steely determination they showed all year. Alan? Yeah, I guess it's hard to argue with everything the lads have said. I just don't know about that. Something to me, God says. I'm fearful of O'Loughlin and Gales for some reason. Um, but, you know, I do agree with the lads that they are, I think Thomas have the better hurlers. They have the, the better squad um, all around. Um, I'm really hoping they pull it off, um, you know, and uh, tap everything off at Bournemouth and, and for the table as well. Um, I think if they can just bring that work rate and if there's the same energy as they brought to Valley Gunner, and the same intensity and same raw passion and raw hunger to get up to that level again. They will, as Greg said, take care of himself. Just fearful of the pace of Bally Gunner or Lachlan Gales. Sometimes they've been winning by a point, as you said, three in a row, when sometimes written in the stars for you. Yeah. Well, when you're pulling through week on week, uh, point after point, and just sometimes it can be written in the stars for you. Um, um, I'm, hard, I'm finding hard to call it, but I, my heart says... Um, Thomas's and my head says I, I don't know. <laughs> we, don't, we, 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 we don't want to know what the head says. What yeah, no, my head says I. You know, my head says if, if they can match them for pace and match their energy and match their youthfulness, yeah, I think they'll win it. Yeah, what I was just the final point I was going to make, Paul. Sorry, was I meant to say there is is like two good homegrown smart managers as well. Very mm -hmm. calm in the line, 
you know, they've gone about their business really, really well all year. They seem to get the on field stuff right a lot of the times. Even the last day against Cushion Dahl, when the Lachlans were had an awful start and like like Brian was calm, settled the thing down, got a couple of scores, got back in the game. And it's the same for Kenneth all year. So yeah, I I I think these two guys have a big future in the game. So yeah, plenty to look forward to around the middle tour there. As you said, we, we we touched on it. So I think those early exchanges will be important. But great, great game to look forward to. That's a positive, isn't it? Two homegrown club men managing their own clubs this weekend. I, yeah, I think what's going on in the game, and I suppose like we've been an awful lot of, uh, let's say, maybe people, I don't know, maybe crying for, let's say, maybe two and three coaches in different numbers. And we've all kind of been but at different times. It suited different clubs. Like, But it's good to see two homegrown guys, yeah, and, and being able to do it in the Ireland Club final. Yeah. And Craig, final say? Yeah, just the, the same as the lads, really. Like, I, I won't uh, differentiate too much. Like, it's, I suppose it's, we've spoke about how good Thomas has been here for the last hour on the podcast, and we're probably looking at them in a microscope for the last six, seven years here in Goa, so we know all their good points. Um, and where I do think it'll come down to, I think the, the O'Loughlin Gales backs against Thomas's fours is very 50 50. That could go either way. But uh, as we touched on earlier on, I just think that the, the Thomas's backs will have too much for the O'Loughlin Gales forwards. That's why I just tip Thomas to win. But I think that it's going to be an awful lot closer than what people have been saying. I think it's going to be right down to the wire. And as the lads touched on there, like the Lachlan Gales have been doing that for the last three games and it's not going to change the weekend. Thomas is going to need every last resource they have. And we mentioned the 17 or 18 players. If that takes Bernard to come on and be a game changer or whoever else is there, Evan Duggan, if he doesn't start, I think that's what it's going to come down to. But um, it's going to be a cracker and I'm really looking forward to I'm really looking forward in particular to the three the three jewels between um the three Kilkenny backs against or three Lock and Gales backs against the uh, Thomas's forwards, Irena, Connor and, and if it's Oshie or whoever picks up who that would be interesting because um I think Aina has been as good as, as Connor this year. Just one last final say, uh Alan, who's I'll go to Ollie, but you first, Alan, who's getting man of the match this weekend? Ooh. <laughs> Depends who wins it, isn't it? Um, who will get man of the match this weekend? If Thomas's win, he could be looking at the likes of. Uh, Call the cousin there. Give us the cousin. Christine. Christine. <laughs> I, 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 I have a fancy for Shane Cooney, and I think it'll be game. Uh, Oshin, give it to the cousin. Yeah, give it to <laughs> Oshin's yeah. work rate and yeah. uh, effort the last day was excellent in fairness. He, yeah, he was, yeah. He, yeah, he, he worked his hard. Uh, and the conditions didn't suit him the last day, you know, because uh, he, he... But Crow Park will suit him. Oh, yeah. Could be a dark... Could be a good bet there, Greg. Yeah, of course, yeah. Get, yeah, get yeah, yeah. Craig, for you? Um, sure, I'll stick with the trend. I give it to Davy. He likes to get them there in finals. So yeah. Give it to Davy. He's definitely a big game player, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> and DJ? Yeah, I, I, do you know what? I, I, Alan touched on Shane, like Shane Cooney. To me, is playing as good as I've seen him playing. If I was maybe could get pick two, I'd say the two boys, three and six for for Thomas. Fenton's yeah, yeah. been, Fenton's been awesome. I think the two of them have led the charge really, really well. So I think maybe if the two of them can get a platform and get plenty of balls in the forwards into the open spaces, into the likes of Oshin, maybe they'll be the supplier and Oshin will end up getting the man of the match. Like so, we're 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 looking for that sort of an access. But if I had to name maybe one. I go Finton just to be different. So Thomas's and O'Loughlin and Gales on Sunday, a cracker awaits, but that's all we do have time for on today's show. Thanks a million to the lads for coming on.